me sun when I go over you by me a house of gold and when your father turns to stone will you take care of me Vancouver is one of the most beautiful places in all of North America from the sea the sky the mountains it's really breathtaking here so when Jada Merritt, Whitecaps legend, hit me up and was like, Kaylin, come to my city and come up to the soccer camp that I'm doing on First Nations land, I jumped at the opportunity. Um, being half Aboriginal Australian myself, Native people's struggles, their culture, their history, that's always been a big part of my life. And you see it everywhere here in Vancouver, from the totems to the art around the city. I used to come up here as a kid and camp on Vancouver Island with my mom for weeks on end. But I wanted to come back now and see what this indigenous population is facing right now and possibly where they're headed in the future. Everywhere, I see everywhere. What are you doing up here? Well, it's just a handheld beer drum. I used the drum in the front row for the Whitecaps game. Found the First Nation located in Fort Langley beside the Fraser River. This is what we call a smokehouse man stick. Okay. So it was a fishing rod, right? That's awesome. We live, we live right beside the river, right? You know, I'm Aboriginal Australian. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, we're all related. Yeah. This is, you know, South Pacific, yep. North Pacific. That's right, yeah, we're covering it all, man. We're all related somehow. Is, is there a lot of indigenous people who support the, support the club as well? Yeah, there's myself, there's my friends from uh, Portland, Tsleil-Waututh, and uh, I got some friends from uh, Yukon. So it's nice to see a lot of uh, indigenous, aboriginal people here. Hope and health, and uh, White Caps have been great with just building communities. Whitecaps Hope and Health programming is in its fifth year now, getting Aboriginal kids playing soccer, encouraging healthy lifestyles, and just showing them that the club and the community cares about them and their future. Former Whitecaps captain Jay Demerit is connecting the native populations in his own way, hosting the Rise and Shine overnight camp on First Nations land, and giving kids from all over an incredible opportunity to learn from a World Cup veteran on the field, but also about life beyond soccer. Just little Demerit soldiers out there walking ready to go, Pemberton. When I'm done playing, I'm gonna start this camp where the kids are gonna learn something more about soccer. We're gonna put them through all sorts of things you're gonna to have to deal with in the real world. And then hopefully, the kids will either make it as pros and, and, and have more knowledge of how to be a good pro. And if they don't, they're gonna have planted seeds way before it's way too late. The people that truly live their passions are the people that are the happiest. And that's what I want to create. I want to create more passions and, 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 and happy people. We played against each other a couple times. And I've seen a lot of things on a soccer field that I thought I couldn't be shocked. I was running down the field, and I remember running towards the ball, and over my shoulder, I just hear a... Row, 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 row. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Jay Demerit? Is, <laughs> is there a dog behind me? This guy, I think wants to win more than I want to win. <laughs> and then I came to find out it was true. When I first met him, he would be dreaming in the middle of the night and talking in his sleep like he was doing an interview, like trying to like speak for how poorly the team were performing. True. Like, oh, I think it's a managerial issue, like kind of. Like in my sleep, was, like it was like, that's how much it was bothering me. It was like so on his mind all the time. It was hilarious. Wow. But off the field and even on it, there's this uh, sort of aura of positivity and inclusiveness um, that's been a big part of like your life and the vision of this camp as well too, right? 100%. If I didn't have the positivity that I did and that I still do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here for sure. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, when you land on, in, on English shores when you haven't been drafted and 
you're living in an attic with a college degree in your pocket and making $40 a game in a place that's so foreign to you because you don't know, know one person on the island, you know, positivity is the only thing that got me through that. The camp here, of course, is, is very diverse and our fields are being played on First Nation land as well. How important is it for you to have that uh, inclusive vision and to um, reflect the community, especially here in British Columbia? Well, I think you just touched on it. You know, community for me is, is the greatest connector around. When I moved to Vancouver and, and, and also Whistler by meeting Ashley, you know, I, I recognized how strong the community is up here. Um, it really spoke to me, and, and, it, and, and, I, and I really always felt like I've belonged in this culture, in this community. I know a lot of the, the people in this town now, including the First Nations community, and they're, you know, they're a community that cares, they're a community that want to help their youth, and, I, and I'm in that community. And if I can help them do that, then 100% I'm, I'm all for it. Now you have your family, your camps. Uh, <laughs> and this is just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. This is a very, very segregated society that you can't segregate yourselves because you're only hurting yourself. So to change, it means that we have to come together and kick a ball. Lawrence Paul is a big deal here in the local art community, but also across the country as well, and really speaks on behalf of the indigenous community, and it shows up clearly in his work. Red man dance on sovereignty, dance me outside anywhere I want. It's a great title. What does your last name mean? The man name? possesses many masks. Oh yeah. Is the hat you're always your... your uh... Yeah, some of my new hats. I used to have a uh, version of a hat when I played soccer that be, kind of became my thing. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. I keep threatening to run for premier of this province just to change the name of British Columbia. I, I say it's New Nations the province of new nations. 52% of native population is under the age of 16. They need direction, they need a good education, cultural revival, they need language. Do you see your art as a way to serve the community to document this history and future? I like to record history. I like to say things about it. I like to talk about these things. We're going to go through this journey of global warming. We have to look after this. It's, it's easy to say it, but it's not easy to do it. We are the first peoples, and every indigenous person wants to save this planet. They're treated like third-class citizens, turned on reservations. This is why you have very, very upset Aboriginal people that have a very hard time because their human rights are not recognized. These are answers that are fixable. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? You like it? I feel great. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so nice of you. Sure. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to help me with the paint. Yeah? Don't have those skills. <laughs> Candace is a woman who works for the Vancouver Native Housing Initiative. It's a really interesting concept. They're creating spaces for indigenous artists to be able to work and live in residency and create opportunities in a city that's been very difficult for people just to be able to afford to live and work. This is a gray whale. On my grandfather's side, I'm gray whale clan. And then I have another one planned uh, of a wolf. It will be seen right there that um, I am wolf clan. Cool. Everywhere I've gone, it's like, it's so beautiful, this city. I don't think I've ever been to a city this gorgeous. But it's expensive, it's crazy for, for an artist who's you know, from whatever background you come from, there's not a lot of spaces. How important is it just to provide, like, a space for people to have a stake in being in Vancouver? It's huge. I mean, it's a new model for social enterprising. So having the art gallery and the hotel support 24 artists in residency, I, you don't see it very often. The indigenous arts community is pretty small. You and Hannah go to Whitecaps games, right? Yes. That's yes. cool. What, uh, what do you like about them? I didn't grow up around soccer like she's growing up around soccer, so I'm getting to experience it through a bit through her eyes, and I really enjoy that part of it. With the songs, and it's it's very much a community being parallel to like how I grew up. It's just like when you have this thing that you have in common, and then everybody's involved. It's it's that sense of community. It's like a fun experience to go get to see um, soccer being played live and like being surrounded by all the people who also like 
enjoy watching and playing soccer. You said that um, not a lot of girls are always playing. Like, why, why do you think that is? Gender roles, probably. <laughs> like, a lot more people, like, girls are playing or, like, watching, and it's really fun to see and nice to see. Being indigenous and being um, with your family history, is that history important to you? Yeah, it's very important and the artwork and everything to do with the culture is <laughs> amazing and it's really important to me because I wouldn't be who I am without like my ancestry and like culture and everything like that. You know, growing up for me, it was like when we would read textbooks about First Nations people, it was always read in the past. Everyone starts to think is that, you know, we're not here, but we are here. We're here and we work in galleries and we're doctors and we're lawyers and we're teachers. And it was never, uh, you know, savage. It's just a beautiful, beautiful culture. And, and what I see in the city here is people recognizing that and wanting to learn more and doing that through the art. The Aboriginal culture here is not just something you can buy in a gift shop, it's not a souvenir. These are people that are here that matter. It's not just a nod to the past and the heritage that they come from. With the environmental issues that are going on right now, these people matter more than ever and they have something to say. The positive for me is you're starting to see some young voices emerging, whether that's in arts, music, culture, sports. These kids have a real understanding of the stories from where they come but are also going to be leading the charge as far as where Vancouver is going. And for me, that's not just a positive for their communities, it's a positive for us all. Later, running down to Riptide, taking away to the dark side, I wanna be your left hand man. I love it when you're singing that song, yeah. I got a lump in my throat, cause you're gonna sing the words wrong. Ha <laughs>